All right, what's up, beautiful people? My name is Derek Standifer, a.k.a. Ayana's daddy, a.k.a. Derek Jr.'s papa, a.k.a. my parents' son. And I have the esteemed honor, privilege, and pleasure of having Enrique Morgan, my mastermind brother, on today's episode of Solve It Sunday. Y'all, let's give, give it up for Mr. Enrique Morgan. Thank you for having me, bro. Thank you, for, thank you for agreeing to do the interview, man. I'm a big fan of your work, big fan of you, man. It's an honor to call you a mastermind brother. Looking forward to planning and building and growing much more in the, in the, in the years to come, brother. Same here, man. Same here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, before we get started, Enrique, man, can we just get a little background about who you are, what you do, uh, you know, just, just to introduce the people to yeah. Gene behind Enrique. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my name is Enrique Morgan. Um, I've been uh, designing since ever since I was 15. Um, it started off as a hobby, and then I went. To, then I ended up going off to college, getting a scholarship uh, to become a graphic designer, and then uh, ended up working for myself for like eight years um, after graduating. So I was a freelance graphic designer for off and on for like eight years, and just this last year when I uh, found out that I was going to be a father, I ended up uh, getting a quote unquote real job as they say. But um but yeah um but now uh so I started off as a graphic designer and now I'm more considered to be a I would say gardener, green thumb. I'm community driven so now I'm focusing on just starting a uh community garden in uh yeah. in Georgia. So that's, that's what's up. That's a that's little bit about me. Yeah. Enrique is actually the mastermind behind the branding and the logos for uh, life is like a roof issue. Thank you for putting together that project. And I'm grateful. So, first question the, the first step of solving the Rubik's Cube, the first step of solving life is to believe. Enrique, what are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your aspirations? And how do you strengthen your belief, sir? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, my belief is built on the fact that I want to break a uh, generational curse of not passing things down passing wealth down to the next generation um so everything i do is rooted is rooted in that um and my goals for just this year is to continue to invest um and then also to uh buy land so this whole year i'm focusing on buying land acquiring land um so so that way i can build my community garden and taking my next hobby into a more uh residual income mm. Mm. and hopefully you know passing it down to my daughter and you know her kids and whatnot so so hopefully uh this year i can get more into real estate um and start building wealth that way that's what's up that's what's up yeah man so and i'm asking my group one of the things that we speak on a lot is kingship and and building it's time to acquire land and pass down not debt and not not burdens down to our kids, pass down resources and things that they can they can multiply. Well, yep. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh so we got the dreams, we got the goals, we have the aspirations. So how do you strengthen those beliefs? Um I, I know I use uh motivational speeches, affirmations, uh vision boards. How do you build your belief, your goals, sir? Oh, uh one of them uh I am a part of, you know, a mastermind group. So I'm held accountable that way. That's one way. Also at the top of the year, we, uh, we create a roadmap for what we want to do for just this year alone, not focusing on the, the upcoming years, but just year one or the year that we're in and just writing them down and every, just every day, just being reminded of what, what I'm doing like that 1% that would take you to uh, 100% by the end of the year by you know achieving your goals so writing it down always meditating on it and um having a group or someone that can hold you accountable to that yes sir yes sir we do a uh, great job you do a great job of holding us accountable i appreciate the call out on the spanish tip said there we <laughs> call me in a minute on the spanish tip we get better at it though all right so ask it is after you believe, you know, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. Step two of solving the Rubik's Cube is solving your cross. Now, solving your cross is developing strong, intense whys 
what are the reasons, Enrique? What are the reasons why your goals and your dreams and your aspirations are non-negotiable? They must come a reality. Because uh, it's for you know, for me, it's simple. Uh, my my grandfather, my and my dad wasn't able to pass anything down to me, uh, or even teach me um, to be how to be a man. Um, and that's that's one of my reasons. I'm like, there's. I cannot continue the cycle. I cannot continue to not pass anything down. So if I pass away today, I would. I know that I did a lot to um, to make sure that you know my daughter has something to build on top of. So yeah, it's a must. She's actually my uh, my motivator and you know my fiance to be as well. But yeah, like I'm const- I see her every day. I spend a lot of time with her. So it's like yeah, she's my reminder you know i always have to be on top of it so yeah it's a must at this point you know <laughs> it's crazy how you know a lot of times when men we, when we're about to have our children uh we you know we, we say we're not ready we're not ready to have the fatherhood and when they get here yes yeah. it's, it's a motivating factor i can't look at yana and derek in the eye and not hustle not grind and Correct. not at least try you know because you know when my mother when my, when my parents passed away you know they didn't have simple things like life insurance. You know, they didn't have simple things that to leave a legacy behind. And you know, we we're vowing to change that for our children. It's time to pass the baton forward and start the building blocks so they can build upon. So thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Any other lies? Any other reasons? Any anybody in your life that hated on you? Anybody that you want to make proud? Anybody that you got to prove wrong? Yes. Wait, was that um, a question? Yes, sir. Is there anyone that I want to prove wrong? That's what anyone you think? Just want to prove wrong. Any uh, <laughs> we talk about changing, uh, changing our, our generational curses and and pushing our children forward, or any other wise that uh, that put that fuel you and push you. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I I want to prove myself wrong sometimes, you know, because you know mm-hmm. we tend to doubt ourselves, or we we set the bar low just because we're comfortable with that. So, you know. It, I, I've been gardening for a year, so I proved myself wrong that I could do it because I've been harvesting a lot. So just proving myself um, and also just anyone who doubted me, um, whoever whoever that may be, uh, or, or, you know, teachers in the past or just um, individuals, but that's necessarily not my focus. My focus is just proving myself wrong and then just proving um, my family that I can, uh, that I can do it, you know, that we can do it together. So. Yeah. Yeah. And what's crazy, sometimes we can be our own worst critics. Yeah. Um, I heard a, heard a speech, uh, a gentleman said, I don't have a problem if you aim too high and miss, but I'm gonna have a real big problem aim too low and hit. So thank you for that. Right. Thank you. Most so, of you. After we solve our cross, y'all, that's a it, it, it's a it's, it resembles a plus sign, and this plus sign will give us the energy and the drive to charge us up and keep us charged when our battery begins to get drained. And Enrique, he's a Rubik's cube solver as well, so he can relate to this. Um, yes. Step, step three of solving the Rubik's cube is filling in your corners. Enrique, and filling in your corners is surrounding yourself with positive people and immersing yourself in a positive environment. So, what kind of people are in your circle, and what kind of environment did you do you thrive in? To, to have you, to, to push you forward. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, for me, uh, I would never forget something my mom always told me as a as a kid, you know, is the, I'm pretty sure some parents have told their kids this, but always surround yourself around, you know, good people, people that you want to um, emulate or people that you want to uh, be like. Um, and for me, it's, you know, it started off with, uh, Antoine Davis, which he's part of the Mastermind Group as well, and Dominic Artis, he's also part of the Mastermind Group. But I've known these two guys since I was, uh, Antoine since I was 19, and Dominic since I was uh, 22, I believe. And those two individuals, and I'm 29 now, um, and I would say that, you know, those two individuals, you know, I look up to and they, you know, Set, they are older than me, so that everything that I want to accomplish, accomplish, they are already accomplishing. Um, and then also um, my digital uh, influencers, um, 
So folks that hold me accountable online, like um, the hip hop preacher. I don't know if you um, heard of Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas, um, yep. Yeah, Eric Thomas. Um, and just also looking at YouTube videos and just surrounding yourself around following those folks that are that you want to accomplish something and they already are already accomplishing it. Um, so that's that's for me. Uh, I like to be around those who are smarter than me. Um, I don't like to be the smart guy in the room all the time, um, but I like to be a part of groups that allow me to speak um, that I can learn from and I also can teach. So just just doing that whole ecosystem of um, influencer. That's um, I'm a big I'm a big fan of Eric Thomas and his work, man. He's powerful, powerful motivational speaker. And Dr. Dennis Kimbrough out of Atlanta, Georgia, he says that if you are the smartest person in your group, you need to find you a new group. Now it'll feed your ego, but it steals from your destiny. It steals yeah. from your future. Um, we need to be around people who are constantly pushing us, constantly motivating. And Antoine and Dominic are, are definitely individuals who, you know, it's it's it's, a, it's more. It's, it's, it reminds me of the Rocky scene. You uh, when Rocky made Apollo Creed. Now Rocky was a he was a good fighter, but he didn't become Rocky until he he until he got into the ring with Apollo Creed. And Apollo Creed was beating him in the races and the ring, but after hanging around Apollo Creed for so long, his his skill level began to elevate. I and mean, that's what I feel about, uh, you know, being a part of the Smashmaster group. It's I have no shame. Yeah, I'm in my group asking questions, asking you questions, asking Don, asking Antoine, asking Jacob questions. You know, I continue to grow. I continue to get better. So thank you. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I I just being a part of the mastermind group for two years. You know, I've experienced uh just growth within myself. Um, and even other people around me have seen me go harder. Um, mm. and I'm more organized um with my goals too. So it's yeah. Okay. That okay. Accountability. That accountability group or that person that can. Hold you accountable constantly um, is a is a must for everyone, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we got the type of people that you surround yourself with. Uh, now, what are the things that you feed? How do you feed your brain? How do you feed your? I know you're a gardener, so I know I know you you limit the uh, the amount of meat that you eat on a, on a weekly basis. So mm. how do you strengthen your spirit? How do you strengthen your mind? How do you strengthen your your physical? Yeah, um, most definitely. Uh, for me, is uh, reading and YouTube university mm -hmm. so when i say that is like just going on youtube and just binge watching anything you want to learn so right now i have channels that i follow in gardening in real estate um and of course uh graphic design but more so web development um ui ux and you know i i enjoy reading but i also enjoy like just listening to an audible or just watching somebody do it hands on and mm -hmm. and i've realized that just by combining those three things you will retain information uh faster so you know i i mean i don't know the same but you know if you want to know um where a person's heart is um i mean if you want to know more about a person see uh see where their heart is i don't know if you know the actual quote but uh, where or where they spend the most of their time in. Um, so I spent a lot of time on YouTube, just look not looking at funny videos or anything, but just watching a lot of uh, things that related to the things that I am into gardening, tech, technology, because that's my career and also uh, real estate, because that's something that I want to transition into. Um, and I've learned I le I've learned a lot. Uh, just being on there, I I didn't think I could have a green thumb in in three months. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, those are my uh, three main things. I and then of course um, asking uh, my closest friends, but or someone that I, that I know that is doing it personally. But I tend to have a bad habit of just reaching out to my network. Besides my um, the uh, mastermind group. But mainly because anything that we want to know is online. So, you know, you can Google it, you know, Google is your best friend. So I spend a lot of time there. Um, but of course, the 10, what the 10,000 hour um, 
Mm -hmm. I haven't reached 10,000 hours of gardening, but um, I, I feel like I'm getting there. I feel like at least I'm at a uh, thousand hours. Yeah. So, yeah. and I can definitely get to attest to the growth, man. Uh, what's crazy when you get started on something, man, it builds belief, it builds confidence. And, and once you have a proven track record, like, yeah. you know, you've had, a, you, you've had a proven track record in gardening. And now I see you helping Jacob with his gardening. I see you helping the other people with their gardening. And now you plotting land, like, I need some land to grow and do this bigger and better. And, you, yeah. you know, you're eating the food that you're growing. Man, that's a beautiful thing, man. Feeding your, not only your mind, not only your spirit, feeding your body healthy. We like to yeah. speak about diets in the physical form, but diets are what you're feeding yourself spiritually. Spiritually, you're yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all that combined. So, um, step four, you kind of address a lot of these principles of step four. Step four is how do you grow and how do you get better? You mentioned reading, you mentioned YouTube University and asking, asking mentors and, and, and you know studying the areas of your tech any other ways y'all can notice this that uh step four is taking it to the next level we're solving our second row any other ways that you continue to grow that you continue to get better that you uh that you develop yourself not as a human being but as a human becoming because you can always become a better version yeah you know, yeah uh failures uh so in tech in tech uh when when you're developing a, uh an app they say fell fast. Um, so, which means that, you know, the faster you fail, the quicker you get to learn. So failures um, to me is a good thing. So in anything I do, I'm always like prototyping. So for example, gardening started me, I started with two planters in my patio and then I prototyped that. I'm like, okay, I could do this. Then I asked my friend uh, if I can, uh, if he can give me space in his background, in his backyard. Um, and I ended up starting with two. Then, uh, then now I have six uh, raised beds, which are uh, five by five raised beds that are growing a whole bunch of different vegetables, um, you know, from, water from watermelon all the way to herbs, um, cucumbers and tomatoes and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I felt I killed a lot of plants in the beginning stage. <laughs> a lot of plants died, um, and and it was just a learning experience. Uh, and the more and more I learn, I mean, the more and more I fell, the more I learn, and it hasn't even been, uh, you know, three years yet. So mistakes that I would have made um, in like year three, um, I've made them in month three because of just watching other people do it and then also doing it yourself um and just prototyping a lot of people feel like they have to do a lot in the beginning if they want to start a business they have to get llc they they want to put everything in order but they never sold the product or even started creating something they were looking for investment but they never never had a prototype to show their investor so for me, I've always I've always been a fan of failure, um, and that's due to the fact that I'm in design, graphic design, and uh, web design. So we're always breaking things um, apart and fixing them back. So yeah, failure is a good thing. I'm pretty sure by now, this is 2020, you've heard this before, um, failure. But it is it is a it is a real thing. Um, a lot of times, people think uh, failure is the opposite way of success. Failure is a precursor to success. Failure and success is in the same direction. You have to fail and you step back and you reassess and you try it again. You fell again, but you fell a different way. You shouldn't be failing in the same type way, shape, form, and fashion. Exactly. You need to fail a new way. You know, there's a there's a, uh, several quotes around failing. I heard uh, I heard a quote. He said, "The master has failed more times than a novice has even tried." You know, I think that's a powerful statement that yeah. master has failed more times than you even tried doing these things. So, you know, learn to embrace failure. Um, you know, uh, Les Brown, he says that anything that's worth doing is worth doing badly until you get it right. You know, <laughs> Humility you know, is real, yeah, too. So ever, if you're not doing anything new, you're not you're not trying anything new. You're not if you're not failing, you're not trying anything new. You gotta step yeah. outside of my comfort zone. Last year you weren't gardening, this year, you know, now you're a master. People coming to you for advice that garden. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful thing, beautiful thing, man. Um, step five. Step five of solving the Rubik's Cube. Step five of solving life is to see the bigger picture. 
Now, seeing the bigger picture uh, is, is a metaphor for keeping your commitment to your commitment through the trials and the tribulations. Every day, what trials and tribulations had, uh, did you have to endure to get to where you are? Uh, what are some of the losses that you've experienced? What are the things, some of the things that almost broke you, but you decided to keep pushing, you decided to keep fighting, and now you, you know, you look back on those times and say, hey, those things made me better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say, I would say uh, after graduating uh, college, uh, typically you would transition right into a, uh, into a job, into your career path. But for me, it was hard for me to find a job in graphic design in 2012. Um, and I was getting like frustrated, overwhelmed. Um, I was working at Office Depot at the time, just just to you know make ends meet, um, and and then I started like freelancing and finding my clients, my my own clients. Uh, I started charging low, and then I ended up increasing my um, my prices. But I could have I could have quit. I could have uh, got I could have gotten overwhelmed with not getting a job because all of my peers was finding jobs, but I just kept going. I even moved <laughs> to Tallahassee to seek more clients, uh, to pursue a, um, a startup venture with Dominic Artist. Um, and I literally had like $30 in my bank account and I used that to pay for a ticket on a Greyhound, one-way ticket. And I was blessed to even, uh, to make it to Tallahassee and it's a small, city but is a lot of resources there and i connected with a lot of folks that ended up becoming my clients to this day and i just kept going and never didn't get a job a salary job until eight years later until to, until like last year basically um and i graduated in 2011. um so yeah man i just kept going because it's one I didn't want it to waste my my time. I feel like I wasted. I would have wasted four years had I not jumped into my career path or found a way to um, start working in my career. So I was blessed to even um, work with uh, Antoine Davis at uh, Fourth Park Studios. Um, I was a freelance designer for that company. Um, and yeah, and I just kept going. Didn't stop, didn't quit. Uh, didn't like working at Office Depot, but you know, I needed to um, find a way to keep going. Um, and I love what I do. So that's, and I guess that was the difference. Uh, most people get into something because they feel like they have to, or they, um, it, it brings in more money. Um, but for me, like I genuinely would design for free if I didn't have to pay rent. You know, it's just my passion of mine. Um, so I had to find a way and I did. And, you know, I built up my clients over the years and, and I just kept going. Mm, mm. I don't I know. That's the struggle part, man. A lot of times when people graduate from, from college and they, you know, I'm going into my field. I want to do what I want. What I got. What mm -hmm. I want to school for. And that's a real heartbreaker to knowing that I'm working at, you know, like you said, I'm working at Office Depot. I got this degree. And I'm working at Office Depot. That can be a, 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 a drainer sometimes, man. but sometimes, bro, we find what it is that we really meant to do when we have to, you know, go through the trials and the tribulations and go through the storms. And, you know, now I, I, I hear the projects that you're doing, man. You're doing Love Beyond Walls. I, I, man, when I found out that you were the designer for Love Beyond Walls, I see Love Beyond Walls everywhere. They're international, all over the world. You know, the hand, uh, if, you, if you don't know Love Beyond Walls, they uh, started... Uh, they started a lot of things recently. The new part, newest project, hand wash stations um, for people who don't have access to, uh, to 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 washing their hands because it's in response to COVID nineteen. And I'm bragging to people like I'm in a mastermind group with a person that does the design, and the branding, and the graphics for Love Me on Walls. Man, that's a, an amazing piece. So big yeah. up to that. Yeah, thank All you. Right. So. Once we uh, once we see the bigger picture and we keep our commitments, our commitment, we will notice that the Rubik's Cube is solved. The Rubik's Cube is solved. I should have had you solve the Rubik's Cube, Enrique, since, you, since you're a Rubik's solver yourself. But the last step, that's a bonus step. 
the bonus step is taking the stickers off the Rubik's Cube. Now, when you take the stickers off the Rubik's Cube, all you do is end up with a ruined Rubik's Cube. In life, if you try to take the stickers off life and try to find shortcuts, all you do is end up with a ruined life. Are there any shortcuts that you've taken that you regret? Or any shortcuts that you could have taken that you avoided and you just kind of want to uh, uh, spread the message of avoiding the shortcuts? Ah, uh, <laughs> there's a few. One that is a constant reminder of a shortcut that I was trying to um, do was, uh, well, it's not even a shortcut. It was just me being impatient. Um, I got into a uh, bad uh, car note deal. Uh, so mm. I, got, um, I bought a Ford Focus. And after purchasing it, had and I made a Google. So I made a Google search and never, I didn't do it before I purchased it. I did it after because my dad was like, why would you buy a Ford, right? So I ended up buying, buying a Ford because I was anxious, like I had money saved. And also going back to the Tallahassee um, uh, story, I was riding a bike in Tallahassee uh, while working and stacking just bread just stacking my bread stacking money saving and i went to the dealership and i was like that's the car i want it was just like i felt like i, I needed a car because i worked hard for it i ended mm -hmm. up not being like i went to one dealership didn't do didn't shop around um and ended up getting a bad car because that car had some issues had recalls on it um i was upside i'm upside down on that right currently so um it's a learning experience uh and i was trying to do a shortcut in a way because i i'm like i need a car today i want to get it i have the money i'm not leaving until i get it um and had i just waited 24 hours or did a google search i probably would have been in a different car um but it's a learn going back to failures, you know, it's a learning experience. I learned a lot about cars, um, dealerships, you know, never buying, I'm not buying a, a, a car note again. Um, and yeah, it, it, it sucked, but you know, it is what it is. Um, and I'm just paying just to build credit. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. Every K, uh, so we got a mastermind call in about an hour and some time. Um, so, uh, one, where can we reach you? Where can we find your work? If people want to hire you out, where can they find you at? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you can, uh, you guys can um, find me on Instagram at uh, DLXEDN. Um, that's Deluxe Edition, the abbreviation of Deluxe Edition. Um, and also, it's struggling at the bottom of the screen. So, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, um, EnriqueMorgan.com, and you can check out some of my work there, um, which I need to update some of my um, Love Beyond Walls work and some other work that I've done just like in New York and stuff. Um, and and yeah, uh, you guys can reach out, re reach me there, and send me an email. And yeah, so but right now on my on my Instagram, I have a lot of like gardening things. But if you want to see my design work, uh, you can check it out at my website, EnriqueMorgan.com. Design work. If you need design work, you can reach out to Enrique. I know people who have contracted Enrique to help build a garden beds, a raised garden beds. Yeah. They started. I think this is a perfect time where people are at home to get their green thumb on. So yeah, um, I'm going to take advantage of the skill set that this guy has. Um, amazing job with his daughter Nova. Amazing job with his daughter Nova. I mean, I'm excited to see where uh, she hit it. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. One thing that I'm proud of Enrique and being is um, another circle of another father who is passionate and committed to the well being and the growth of their children. I know there's this big stereotype that black men and their kids, I don't, I personally, I don't even know of black men that don't take care of their kids. That's not heavily involved in the children's lives. I mean, he's always bragging about those, always sharing stories about what she's doing there. I see speak Spanish, English, and that's amazing. That's an amazing, amazing uh, feature to have in my mastermind. Like his father's kingship building. Yeah, um, man, so, I'm, try I'm trying to be like you, man. I, I feel like you're doing a great job as well, just teaching your daughters. I mean, your daughter and your son how to read. Um, 
And it's motivational to me because every time you you uh, shared a technique or how you uh, taught your son how to read, um, I'm taking notes of that and just like, I want to do that with my daughter. I can't wait until she's um, old enough to start like picking up on words and sounds and just learning how to read. So, you know, kudos to you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it out here. The more you do, the more you do, man, the, the more passionate, the more excited you'll get about doing it. So, you know, you just start, man. Just start. You already know that. Just start. Uh, well, Enrique, man, it has been an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to interview you today on Solve It Sunday, good sir. Uh, man, from the top of my heart to the bottom of my soul, I appreciate everything that you've done, everything that you're doing, everything that you will do. Uh, any last words before we, uh, before we log off? Uh, no, man, but thank you just for having me, man, and I appreciate it, man. It means a lot to be here and share my my story. Thanks. All right, good people. Thank y'all for viewing us all the Sundays. Y'all be great like the lakes. Be blessed like the sneeze. <laughs> Peace, man. Thanks.